Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial on importing your DAS Genesis 2 character into iClone. In the previous tutorial, we focused on the uh, export settings and a little bit about uh, facial animation. Now in this tutorial, we're going to focus more on indigo rendering and the material settings therein. So uh, you can see this little animation that we did in the uh, previous tutorial. I'm going to go back to frame one here and we're going to go ahead and focus on our character's face because the faces are complicated enough. We're not going to go into the, uh, the body in this tutorial here. And if you want to get some good lighting on your face in iClone, just a quick hint here, you can select your key light and, you know, kind of give a key light on the one side of the face like this, maybe a little bit of, at a 45 degree angle there, and then select your rim light and you can uh, pan it back and forth to create something like this and get that nice little border along the outer edge right there. That's your very basic, simple portrait lighting, but we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial. We're going to use the Indigo Sun and Sky preset. But before we do that, I need to go into Daz here. I need to export these maps. Now I have my surface uh, color tab open here and I'm in Jazz, uh, Jazz Genesis 2 Mail uh, here and if I go twirl down a little bit I can go to default templates and then we have a bunch of different uh, templates here. Uh, template 1 you can see this one is the uh, face map. Template 3 you can see this one's the hands and the feet and stuff like that and uh, template 4 this one is the uh, mouth. So we're just going to use the face like I mentioned in this tutorial so I'm going to go to template 1 and we have a number of different uh, maps right here. The first one we're going to pay attention to is the bump strength map. So let's take a look at this. We can see the uh, path right here if we hover over. This one's called m 5 Philip face 2 bjpeg So let's go ahead and click this and let's try and find that. We're going to go to browse and let's scroll down a little bit. And uh, face 2 uh, b that's the one right here. So we select that. We can just select that. We can just go ahead and uh, copy that. Right click and copy it. I'm going to go to my desktop here. Cancel that, go to my desktop, and then I'll just uh, go ahead and paste this on my desktop for easy access. And let's go back to DAZ and export the other one as well, which is the specular map. So for the specular map, we'll go down a little bit more. And you can see specular active, oh, specular color right there. So this map here, uh, face02s.jpg. So let's find that, face02s.jpg. Uh, go to S. Here we go. That's the map we're looking for right there. Again, we'll just copy this one from that directory and go ahead, cancel, and paste it to my desktop for easy access again. So we have the two uh, files we need right there. So let's go into iClone then and apply those. Uh, first of all, let's close down our DAS. We no longer need DAS open right here. So let's close that down and go into iClone really quickly. There we go. And I'm going to apply these maps to my character's face. So again, the easiest way to do that, make sure your character is selected, go to your materials, press the B hotkey, and select his face. And the face map is selected right now. And so I'm just going to go ahead and load it into the bump map channel right here. And double click that, and I'm going to find that bump map right here. The B indicates the bump, so let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to open it as a grayscale bump map because the map was indeed grayscale. And once this loads in, you'll notice a lot more texture on the character's face. You see the uh, the nice pores and everything like that. The nose might be a little bit extreme. So what we can do is we can just go ahead in the bump uh, channel right here and decrease the strength a little bit. So we get something a bit less, uh, less strength on the nose, just a little bit, something like this. I think around 40, the value of 40 is nice. And you can use the forward slash key to check your lighting. Oops, let's use our key light here. Something like that. You can check the uh, lighting results on the skin. I think that should be just fine right there. We just want a little bit of bump around there. I can maybe even uh, go back to materials again here. Increase that bump a little bit, something like uh, 50, closer to 50 as well. We just need a little bit of a bump on the forehead and everything like that. And then we can also load in the specular map. Now when I load in the specular map, the specular values that we added earlier, that we modified earlier, are going to change a little bit. So notice that when I add in that uh, specular map, nothing much changes right now, but let's go to my specular value down here. And previously it was at 25. Notice that if I increase it, even to like over 100, we don't get much of a specular result. So basically what the specular map does is it allows these specular highlights to focus in one particular area as opposed to being all over the face. You can see that we have much more focus even if we have a higher value. So we can take this up to something like 100 and you get a nice, nice result there on the nose and everything like that. Just use your specular to emphasize different curves in your face. You don't want anything too high. Maybe even 120 is too high. But we'll just work with that. 
So I think that looks fine. We can use our uh, key light again to uh, test it out. There we go. We get some nice bump and some nice reflection on our character's face, especially in the forehead and the area right there. And this area on the upper cheek right there, if I zoom in really close, you can see it a little bit better. There we go. All right, so let's get into some indigo rendering then. I'm going to mess around with the indigo materials and show you how to render them nicely within indigo. So let's use a nice kind of artistic um, you know, pose, something like this. And uh, I think something like this will be just fine. Like he's looking off into the sunset. And let's go ahead uh, over into indigo. And what I want to do is just go and select my uh, sun and sky. And we can uh, take off our directional lights. Um, what I can do as well to make this easier, I want to get some lighting from the, uh, you know, this side of the of the camera right here. So let's go ahead and select our key light and move our key light over to something like this. I think should be fine, and maybe something like that. And I'm going to just uh, disable the rim light right now. And the easiest way to get our sun coming from that direction in indigo is once you're in indigo, go ahead and align it to align the sun and sky to your key light. So it's going to be coming from this direction right here. We can have an interesting result. Maybe we can even just, oops, let's make sure we select our key light there. You can have a little bit more, a little bit higher up in the sky, something like that. There we go. We get, we might get an interesting result like that. So let's go ahead and give this a whirl in indigo using the sun and sky preset. So uh, here we have it loaded up. Uh, it's going to be loading up uh, momentarily in indigo. And so you see we get a fairly quick render. And uh, let's pay attention to a couple things. We get some very strong highlights on the hair there. And I'll show you how to fix that. If you don't want those strong highlights, uh, you can take those off as well. Uh, let's pay a little bit more attention to the uh, character's face here once this face starts rendering. You can see already we get a little bit of, uh, of texture on the face here. We don't get much specularity on the face. And there's a way we can modify that as well. If we want to slightly adjust the direction of the sun, we can do that as well. Um, if I wanted to maybe go into uh, background settings right here, I can change the zenith of the of the sun or the azimuth right here. If I wanted to change this, we can change this to something like a negative uh, 20, and we get a little bit more of a more from the uh, center, uh, and less for, less from far on the right there. I think this one should be okay right here. And let's just go ahead and focus on this angle right here and this lighting scenario. So a couple of things to note here. We want to actually create a little bit more specular value along the skin. And we want that bump map. Uh, you'll notice that the bump map is fairly strong once it starts to render a little bit better. You'll notice that the bump map is fairly strong. And we we'll want to kind of try and decrease the amount of bumping, uh, the amount of uh, bump on the bump map, uh, to be honest here. So you can see uh, it's on the nose fairly strongly in this area. If we zoom in, you can see it uh, quite, a bit, uh, quite a bit more uh, significant right there. Now we're going to, to uh, figure out a way to fix these two issues. Now the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select pick material. I'm going to go ahead and pick my character's face. And you can see the face material loads up here in my property editor. And I have a phone assigned to the face right now. Currently an IOR value of 2.2, which is fairly high for the face. An exponent value of 1.49 and a Fresnel scale of uh, 1.0. So these are fairly high values uh, for, for character skin generally. But if we wanted a bit more of a, uh, of a reflective value on the skin, we can increase that as well. Say we want him to seem like he has a bit more of a oily skin, or we wanted to create more of a specular, more of a significant uh, specular highlight on his cheekbone and his nose and stuff like that. The first thing we'll want to do, though, is actually go into the uh, materials down here, and we have this bump map. You can see this is the bump map that we added. Now I can select this bump map right here, and again, if I zoom in, notice that you know there's fairly significant bumpage, I guess you can call it, on the uh, on the uh, nose right there. What if we want to create less of a bump map? Now, be, I'm going to preface this by saying that um, when you increase your specularity values, um, such as your IOR and your ex, uh, exponent uh, exponent value right here, you want to um, balance that out with your bump value. So I'm going to show you what I mean in just a moment. If, for example, right now. I increased my uh, you know, exponent to something like uh, 500. Let's t uh, take it to something extreme. Whoops, <laughs> that's not extreme. Something like 500 here. And then go up and change our IOR to something like 3. Uh, notice that we do have a little bit more reflection. You'll notice after a couple of seconds that we'll have a bit more reflection, uh, rather specular areas, specular highlights around the uh, cheekbone area 
and along the uh, bridge of the nose and everything like that. But it's really not that noticeable. Considering we increase the IOR by almost two, uh, almost a single, a single uh, value, and we increase that exp exponential value, uh, exponent value rather, by up to 500, we're not really getting much of a result. And that's because this bump map is kind of balancing things out. And I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. So let's go down to the bump map right here. And let's go ahead and load that up. And uh, what I'm going to do is just move this a little bit to the side. And we need to mess around with this scale value here. So this scale value determines basically how much of this bumpiness is going to be used uh, from this map. So the extremity of the bumpiness. And you can see, of course, that it's very rough right here. And we're getting a very rough result. So let's go ahead and try to decrease this uh, value, this scale value. And now this is a very sensitive value, so you're going to have to mess around uh, on your particular character quite a bit to get the uh, value that you want. I found that a good value that works is 0 0.002, and this will basically decrease the amount of bumpiness. And you'll notice a lot more specular highlights along the areas that I was mentioning right now. You'll notice a lot, a lot more specular highlights around the nose. Uh, notice that there's these brighter spots right there. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for that slightly, slightly oil, oily look. And once we render a little bit more, you'll notice it around uh, the nose area here as well. And uh, it'll be basically emphasizing our, uh, our bump map. Um, so the specular value is there to emphasize the bump map. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. If we, uh, we can even zoom in a little bit more on this character. But if I zoom in right here, notice that this really small specular highlight right here, you can see the bump map a lot more noticeably in this area than you can over here. And that's where specular and bump maps, uh, specular highlights and bump maps kind of complement each other. You'll want to uh, have this specular area so you can notice the bump map a lot better. Um, let's take a look at uh, a different value here. Let's maybe go and select this. And let's change the scale to something like uh, you know, 0 0.0005 and take a look at what that looks like. This will be a very extreme value and you can notice the specular highlights already being uh, very extreme on the skin. And if we uh, let this render for a couple minutes, you'll say it's not that bad. Uh, we're not getting too much specularity. It's actually within a, within a reasonable range right now. And this again really depends on your lighting scenario. Um, if your lighting is coming from directly uh, on your character's face or at an angle, you want to change this uh, bump map uh, scale accordingly. So if I zoom in right here, Notice that we have, you know, these, these specular values right here. And that's kind of just creating, a, this one's a little bit too shiny. It doesn't really, uh, it looks a little bit too reflective. And uh, we don't really want something like that. So let's go ahead and change this bump map back to a value of the one I originally had, 0 0.002. And then just close that down. Now if we want the lips to be uh, shinier, for example, notice the lips are already fairly shiny. We can go ahead and uh, select the lips, so we'll pick a material and pick our lips right there. And then uh, the lips will be selected in our uh, scene hierarchy there. And currently we have no bump map for the lips. So if I change the IOR for the lips, for example, let's change the IOR to the same values we had uh, before for the skin. Notice that if I change the IOR to 3, we already have a lot more, a lot more specularity on those lips. And again, that's because we didn't have a bump map applied. Uh, like I mentioned, the bump map kind of uh, counteracts the effects of the IOR and the exponent values and all these different fung values. So if, for example, I load in the bump map, the same bump map I loaded in, because uh, the lips are going to use that same bump map, if I load this in, once this is loaded in, you'll notice that uh, we don't have a lot of specularity on the lips, maybe a little bit, uh, still a little bit more than the uh, face, but we can actually go in here as well, and you can see this one is 001 currently. So if we wanted to, you know, have a bit more of a scale on this one, we can go ahead and do that. We can put a value of, uh, you know, 0 0.009 and take a look at what happens there. Once I do that, notice that that uh, specularity on the lips goes down significantly. And uh, we can even have a value. And notice that there's quite a bit of bumpiness on those lips as well. Um, so generally what I'd want to do for these lips here, since I don't want them to be too shiny, I'm going to use a scale value of, 0.005 and I'm going to go up and change this IOR to something like uh, uh, 1.5 and we want them to uh, not look too shiny look a little bit dry he's not wearing uh, he's not wearing lip balm or anything like that all right so we got a fairly decent result here 
And now the final thing I want to do is I want to change the hair slightly. Uh, so I'm going to pick a material and I'm going to select the hair. Now the hair is a little bit different because it's a combination of, of two uh, maps right here. The null is the opacity map. So that's allowing us to have strands of hair and everything like that. And the material B is the wisps. So this is the actual material that we're looking at. So let's load up this one. And if we want to have, you know, less specularity, it's fairly easy to do. We can even change our material type to a diffuse. If we do that, notice that we have barely any highlights on the hair. And the hair seems a little, a lot more, uh, a lot more matte. For example, we don't have um, as shiny of a result on the hair. So that's kind of a cool, a cool example of you know how you can just really switch the hair over to diffuse. Again, if you wanted really shiny hair, you can go ahead and modify that phone value. Uh, we all know how to. Uh, you should probably by now know how to adjust the exponent values, the IOR values, and everything like that. We we go into more detail on those values in other Indigo tutorials. Um, but if we just let let this render for a few minutes, notice uh, specifically that this area right here we have a lot of nice highlights on the skin and everything like that. And over here, once this renders a bit more, we'll be able to see that uh, the interaction of the specular and the bump maps a bit more, uh, like I was mentioning. All right, so we've been going a little bit more than five minutes. You can see both five minutes and 40 seconds here. And I've tweaked a couple of the values here. Uh, you can see the skin has a lot more specularity. Uh, what I've done there is just increase the IOR value. And you've, I've tried to simulate sort of a sweaty kind of uh, oily look to the skin that's being reflected off the skin here. And you can notice right here that that bump map and the specularity really play well together. So it emphasizes the uh, the pores you can see right there. And uh, especially over here as well and on the nose. And basically that's a really great way to uh, emphasize the details in your skin, uh, the, the bump map and the pores and everything like that, by combining those two values together so you can get a nice um, even highlight like that. And you can see there's a little bit of almost a sweaty appearance right here down by on the upper lip as well. And uh, I've tweaked that uh, hair value as well. There's also a, a bangs and a hair. They're separate materials. So yeah, I've had, I had to change the uh, bangs to a diffuse as well. And that really depends. If you wanted to have a little bit of highlight, you can change that to a, a phone shader and you can uh, um, add some additional uh, you know, highlights, increase the IOR and everything like that on there as well. Uh, but what I wanted to do is show you now how you can use some tone mapping to really emphasize the, uh, the effect of your, of your, of your render. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go down to tone mapping here. And I'm going to choose a really cool uh, filter that I found here. Um, I like this one. This is a uh, Agfa Chrome RSX2 uh, 200 CD. So you can see when I apply this, we get a really, really, really nice effect. Uh, this really high contrast. And now you can really see that effect of the uh, specularity levels on the pores. Um, this is a fairly high contrast scene right here. The lighting is uh, really detailed. And you can even see like sort of a, a pimple on his nose and everything like that. All the details are, are very well defined uh, when you have a high contrast scene like this. We can even change our uh, white point value to something like uh, let's try a D75 and get a bit more uh, warmth in there as well. And you can see that uh, you know with just a few clicks you can get your uh, your, gen your Genesis character to render like this. We get some nice highlights. It may look a little bit you know sweaty, uh, too much specularity for some of you, but I was kind of going for the uh, sweaty kind of oily look on the face there as well. We could even adjust that EV as well, maybe something like uh, bring it up to a value of 3. And there we get a bit more of a realistic result, uh, a bit more of an even render, um, 3.4. We can get something nice like that. And these values, like I mentioned, can be adjusted on the fly. You don't need to uh, start your render over again. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, that's how you can kind of tweak your values uh, in Indigo um, to create the ideal render for your DAZ character. And so you can fool around with all that stuff. There's lots of different materials in, in Daz characters to select and adjust and everything like that. So uh, have fun with your uh, Indigo renders, uh, your Daz Indigo renders of your Daz characters. And uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, guys.